Sakafet YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Guys, it's the weekend and you know the weekend means takeaway. Considering we're in quarantine and we can't go out to eat, I'm showing you how to make it at home. So first off on the menu, we're going to be making some potato wedges. Now, I actually wanted to go for some crispy chips, but I thought, you know what? The chicken is going to be fried already. Let's cut back on the oil a little bit. As you can see, I'm just cutting the potatoes in half and then cutting it as small as I can into long strips. And that is it really. It's very easy. Um, I think I really like that method because then the potatoes can end up turning out nice and crispy and listen it takes you less than five minutes to prep all of this so why not I'm actually gonna be going for some seasoned wedges today so we're just chopping it up So now that my potatoes are nicely chopped, I'm just going in with a cup of water just to rinse off the potatoes just a little bit, take away a little bit of that starch, and then we are just going to go ahead and dry it off straight away, okay? You want to get it as nice and dry as possible before we go ahead and start seasoning these up. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of olive oil. This will allow all of those beautiful seasonings to stick. And I'm going in with some mixed herbs. It consists of parsley, thyme, and oregano. Then I'm going in with some paprika for some color. Listen, it's going to look so pretty. Then I'm going in with some pink salt. You can use regular salt, but I love using the pink salt because it's not as salty. And then I'm using some black pepper. Just putting about half a teaspoon of black pepper on there. Now I'm just going in with my hand and I'm just massaging those seasonings onto those wedges takes about less than a minute to massage it on really and listen this is raw but it's already looking so beautiful considering we will be baking it in the oven it is just going to be nice and crispy and it's also going to be a little bit healthy considering we're not using any oil today after it's nicely massaged you want to go in with your baking dish i'm using a little bit of cooking spray and just lining my baking dish with it and we're going to go ahead and pour those beautifully seasoned wedges on there. I'm going to ensure that I flatten them out, making sure that they're not overlapping each other. Because the thing is, you want this to be nice and crispy. You don't want them to be on top of each other and they're all sweaty and soggy. You don't want none of that. So just lay it nicely on one layer, making sure that there is none on top of each other. So now I'm just going in with some more cooking spray and my oven had been preheated to 200 degrees and I will be baking this for 35 minutes. This is after the first 30 minutes and I was just flipping them over ensuring that they have some nice color on both sides and as you can see they're already looking beautiful. They're partially cooked, just need a few more minutes. And if I break into one of them, you will see that, listen, they're cooked. They just need a little bit more, you know, a bit of crispiness. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop it back into the oven for another 5-10 minutes, which will bring the total cook time to about 40 minutes in the oven on 200 degrees Celsius. Okay, just go ahead and pop it back in. To the oven so onto our chicken strips I'm just going in with some salt and some black pepper of course I always start with salt and black pepper and I'm using some chicken thighs that I deboned and cut into strips myself okay because nobody has chicken strips money okay darling too expensive I'm now going in with some mixed herbs putting about half a teaspoon of mixed herbs as well as my Maggie all-purpose seasoning 
this is gonna give this so much flavor so much flavor and now we're gonna go in with some smoked paprika for the color because paprika don't really taste like much and some chili powder of course and my green seasoning and some olive oil now we just want to mix that up for about 30 seconds to a minute ensuring that you coat this beautifully just mix it up massage it yes girl work it just work it okay now you know the drill after we mix it up and mix it up and mix it up just a little bit more we want to go in with some clear up and just put it on the top and we're going to pop it into our fridge for about 30 minutes to marinate so the flavors can really absorb into that chicken yes honey so while the chicken is resting i just went in with one egg and one cup of milk and i'm just seasoning it lightly with some black pepper and some complete seasoning because you know we need some flavor in there right and we're gonna whisk it for about 30 seconds or so and this is going to be our wet batter for dipping the chicken strips in very important it helps for that flour to stick onto the chicken now i'm going in with half a cup of plain flour and to season it we're gonna put some black pepper i always season my flour i think it really helps to give the coating a nice little flavor as well very very important and then we're gonna go in with some all-purpose seasoning this is the maggi all-purpose i love that one and the smoked paprika of course i always add smoked paprika to my batter and my sazon yes i can't do without my sazon gonna add some in there and then we're gonna whisk it up for about 10 seconds or so so our chicken is nicely rested for 30 minutes and i'm just gonna go ahead dip it into the wet batter first and then we're gonna dip it into the dry batter make sure to squeeze that flour onto it because it helps for that coating to stick nicely then we dip it back into the wet batter again and then we're going to put it into the flour okay this is what helps to give a nice crispy coating and as you can see i am squeezing the flour onto the chicken strips that means the curtain is not going to come loose when it's frying so i'm just going to dip the rest into the egg mixture and i'm going to dip it into the flour but you sort of get the picture into the egg into the flour back in the egg and then into the flour yet again a little time consuming but it's so worth it it is so worth that crispiness yes now i'm going in with some vegetable oil and my pan is already on medium heat and i'm just gonna go in with my chicken strips make sure your fire is not too high this will cause the strips to burn and they won't be cooked on the inside so i'd say medium heat throughout the six seven minutes is gonna take to cook doesn't take very long because bear in mind there is no bone in this it's just meat so keep an eye flip it at three to four minutes and then you just want to wait till it's nice and golden guys it looks so 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 delicious already as you can see i'm flipping them over already because it's been about three four minutes and then as soon as six seven minutes is up you don't want to waste no time to take it out okay looks so so gorgeous so after six minutes these are ready to be removed as you can see they look nice and golden i'm using this wire rack because i find that the oil can just drain out of the chicken rather than absorb into a paper towel i think this method works better try it and see how you like it i'm just removing them one by one and as you will see the excess oil will just drain straight off onto the rack at the bottom which is pretty pretty cool okay these look so beautiful so crispy they just look so nice look at the close-up yes my darlings this is better than store-bought man this is better than the restaurants um i actually had my husband helping me remove the second set while i do something else because hey if you don't work you not eat that's not true that doesn't matter anyway um yeah so as you can see he removed all of them and i'm just frying the last batch but these chicken strips do you see them my darlings they look so 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 good yes i can't wait to dive in stop 
now on to our beef patties as you can see they look gorgeous um this is some minced beef that i had and all i did was just season it up with some salt and black pepper and green seasoning and i just flattened them out into some patties as you can see you can see the green specks of um, green in there and that is because of the green seasoning that i put in there so i am just allowing this to fry for about three four minutes on both sides um i like my beef patties to be well done i don't do all of this pink and medium well no 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 i want it to be cooked through okay so i'm using a non-stick pot by the way so i don't really need to use any oil or anything like that and when it's about six to eight minutes it's nicely cooked all i do is just melt some cheese on the top for about 30 seconds or so before i go ahead and remove these it's very very easy to do listen anybody can make this okay so after i add the cheese onto the beef patty i just let it go 30 seconds then i take it out and my cheese is nicely melted so now i just want to toast the burger buns just a little bit i'm putting a little bit of butter on there like so and i'm just letting it toast for about a minute or two till it gets some color i love it to look nice and brown and crispy that's my own personal preference but yeah i just love when it has that nice little dark char going on and now we're gonna make a little burger sauce i'm going in with some mayo i'm going in with some ketchup and i'm also going in with some sweet chili sauce and i am gonna just combine that together just mix it up mix it up mix it up if you don't have any of these ingredients you can just use the burger sauce in the bottle and that will work perfectly fine as well now it's my favorite part time to assemble this burger so i'm putting a little bit of sauce on the burger bun then we're putting one beef patty and cheese on the top put some lettuce and some tomato of course and then we're just gonna make sure we let this sit nicely we can put some red onions as well this is optional i also don't like pickles so i won't be using any pickle put a little bit of burger sauce again and we want to put another burger bun because we're going to double stack this honey and we want to just put a little burger sauce again on top of that burger bun and then we're going to top it off with another beef and cheese yes darling that's looking so good already like yes make sure it's sitting right put a little bit more lettuce some more tomato and then we're going to put a little bit of onion again on top of that and we're going to top it with some more burger sauce yes and you just want to put a little bit of burger sauce on the top bun and that will be it listen takes about 10 seconds to assemble and i don't even do this every day <laughs> looks really really gorgeous if you want you can just push a stick through just so it can stay nice and we have our gorgeous potato wedges looking so nice and gorgeous and we're just assembling those strips Oh my goodness, can you see it? Oh, this looks so good. I garnished with a little bit of parsley. Listen, let me know. Oh my goodness, does it look good or what? Listen, I had some leftover coleslaw from lunch yesterday and I just put some on there because I just think it would be amazing with this delicious burger strips and wedges listen i hope you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to give me a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this recipe i'll see you again in my next one bye bye